All right, guys, another watch loaned in by my Discord member. Username's kind of weird, three ball man, but in the watch community, it kind of makes sense, right? So big thanks to him for allowing us to see this guy. This is a Certina DS Multi-8 analog and digital displayed 42 millimeter watch. Now, I'm going to keep this video pretty dang short because I'm not going to go over the functions. Instead, I'm only going to link a video down below where someone did, it's basically the same watch, a little bit different configuration, but it's the same movement inside, and they cover it in thorough detail of how to use the functions. I played around with it a little bit, and it's not very intuitive. So if you are looking to buy one of these watches, you can spend the time to learn how to use it on a more detailed video. This is just going to be a quick overview so people can understand if uh, they like the looks of the watch and then they can explore it further on. So 42 millimeter case, 51 and well, 51.4 millimeter lug to lug. You can see fully polished sides, polished bezel, brushed on the top. You have polished center links on the bracelet. It's only 12.8 millimeter thick. That's gonna help it wear really good, even though it is a 42 by 51 watch. 23 millimeter lug width, bracelet tapers down to 20. Fold over clasp, three micro adjust. So that part I like. Interesting case back. I quite frankly don't know what's going on there. Um, I don't know if that's for battery change or something. I, I don't know what's going on there. I've never had this configuration before. So, okay, the watch. Here's the hang tag. C020.419.11.052.04. I'm not sure the retail price on it, but I know that when you could find these, say like Joma or any other uh, gray market dealer like that, you could pick these up for around $250 or maybe even less. They seem like the inventory is drying up on them a little bit. I think I found maybe a couple places that maybe have them, again, snapshot in time. So by the time you watch this, you might not even be able to find one of these. 100 meter water resist. This is not even a crown, like you don't do anything with this crown other than well, everything, except for it's not done in a traditional way. You push it, okay? So your digital display down here, you push your crown and it cycles through. There's T1, T2, that's basically time zone one and time zone two. Let me zoom in so maybe you can see this. So, and then as you push it, you'll cycle through and then you can do a quick swap of your time zones. So GMT essentially, so you could switch time zones and then um, the hands would move over to the other time zone time. So if you're traveling, Bada boom, bada bing, you're done, okay? So, and then now we're getting into air territory I'm not 100% sure of. I believe this is the stopwatch. So you can hit, uh, yeah, like a chronograph. You can start, you can stop. But then to like reset, it gives you, it's more of like a lap timer and it gives you like totals and you can, you have to hold that down to reset it, okay? So again, it's not super intuitive to me, but I think I can muggle my way through it. Um, this mode here is a countdown timer you set the countdown numbers that's actually kind of nice because a lot of watches are preset and they're a little more cumbersome this one you can actually set the countdown on it there's uh, multiple alarms so you can do them on or off it's it's hard to see guys i know i'm sorry um and then you can cycle through those not really sure about that oh that's the set function for setting the times i think and then back to your time zone one okay um really nicely printed arabics on this nice pencil style handset so that part is super legible and then as far as no seconds hand you can see it on the digital display it's always running even though the hands are kind of blocking it right now so it's still a really cool fun watch and quite frankly myself and many of you guys probably are not going to mess with a lot of those functions sure we want to know how to use them and we could say that they're you know they have the capabilities but most of us just kind of set it and use it as a regular watch. So if that's how you're going to use it, maybe pick one up for 230 bucks if you can find one and just enjoy it for what it is. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than, say, like a Breitling Aerospace, which I'm not saying this is on the same level of that as all, but at all. But I'm saying that it has a similar overall vibe and look and a fraction of the price. So you can see it. It wears great on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. 
So if you really, really want to have those functions, I will say this one's probably easier to use than a Breitling Aerospace. But if you really want those functions, just get a G-Shock and be done with it. To me, these are intuitive. I'm probably biased towards that statement because I'm so familiar with it, but I don't have to learn a new platform. I'm, I'm not big on doing that at this stage in the game because I have so many watches and I go through so many watches. Decent loom as well. The seven's a little weird because it's cut off. The eight, whatever, five. I guess a few of the numbers look kind of funny that they're cut off, but got to put that screen somewhere. I don't think there's a light. Yeah, I don't think there's a backlight on the uh, dis digital display either. I, I hit a button and it didn't do anything. So, Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.